Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans with megalithic lens. This presentation is a continuation of my previous video on Jaya Tataka Bare with Nippon Temple on the inside. But this video is more about Nippon Temple with Jaya Tataka Bare on the outside. Cambodia is a beautiful country that will turn back the clock many decades behind compared to developed countries of first world nations. In a wood-based civilization with no electricity and proper drinking water straight from the faucet, you won't be too far off from how King Jayavarman VII saw his people. I mentioned earlier that this super beret structure was once a hospital for sick Angkorians. But to understand the health connection needs some explanation more than just animals and geomancy elements of water and fire, earth and wind. This structure is also said to represent fire, water, earth and wind. So that means it has some astrology and geomancy wisdom incorporated into the design. Since Indian astrology is very close to Western astrology, you can say that only the lion is represented as fire. The presumably bull could have represented earth. If the human head is to represent Aquarius, the water bearer, then this small pool should represent air. To say that this pool represents fire, water, earth and air is incomplete because water is not represented while earth and air is in a limbo. To say that this pool represents Indian astrology is also incomplete because only Simha the lion is represented. Virsaba the bull for earth is now Kumba the Aquarius for air. Both will not be able to represent water. Water element is a missing representative. Horse appears in Chinese astrology and elephant is a misfit for both Chinese and Indian astrology. I think mainstream interpretation needs further explanation. Jaya Tataka Bare is also noted for a special design called Queen Kang's Formation. These five structures are most likely more than just a coincidence. This formation is very much noted by those who are aware of megalithic cultures around the world. To give you an example, there is a Queen Kang's formation in Yoni Linga at Bhima Shankar Temple in India. Crop circles are also sending us a message through this formation. There seems to be a message of equilibrium. If you crack five eggs in a shallow bowl, they will arrange themselves into a Queen Kang's formation because it is at equilibrium. Equilibrium is about balancing yin and yang energy. When you are well balanced mentally and spiritually, then you are most likely to be physically healthy. The entire beret is so vast, it actually looks like a huge natural lake when it is full. It is said to represent the mythical Anavatapta lake where Nanda and Upanda live. Anavatapta is a lake in Buddhist cosmology where it is supposed to have curative abilities. This could be a monument for spiritual and physical healthcare system of ancient Cambodia. In the Buddhist cosmology, Anavatapta Lake is in the center of the world. Interestingly, this mythical land with a mysterious lake was drawn like a Milky Way of our galaxy. I wonder if this is just an impressive coincidence or there is a sacred knowledge from other dimension. I guess we will never know. This diagram is rather intriguing because it has the same animals as those at Nippon Temple. Even the position of the animals are the same. They represent a lake where four main rivers flow out of the continent and into the seas. The elephant represents Sutlej River. The bull represents Ganges River. The lion represents Indus River. And the horse represents Brahmaputra River. 
This map was done by Rokashi Hotan, who was a Buddhist monk. It was printed in 1710 with Buddhist cosmology in mind. However, it is based on Hinduism as well. Goddess Parvati has a lion as her Vahana. She is the supreme goddess of Shaivism. The lion represents the Indus river. God Indra is the most powerful god in Hinduism. He is like Zeus of Greek mythology or Jupiter of Roman mythology. Indra has an elephant as his Vahana. The great Sutlej river is represented by the elephant in Nippon temple. Lord Shiva is the most high god in Hinduism. He is the supreme god of Shaivism. He is responsible for creating the universe and is above Brahma and Vishnu in the Trimurti. He is the god of Ganges river. He has the famous Nandi as his Vahana. So the bull Nandi represents Ganges river. There are several deities with horse as Vahana, but sunrise in the east will make god Surya the best candidate. Surya means sun. Surya is the sun god with seven horses as his Vahana. The horse represents Brahmaputra river flowing to the east. As what I can read from multiple sources, my compilation is only up to this point that makes sense to me. It is very much a Hindu concept as far as religion is concerned. It is very much an Indian territory as far as geography is concerned. So on the surface, it looks like a Hindu temple with Hindu concept as what Wikipedia would say. But suddenly, when it comes to health, it is very much a Chinese traditional concept of yin and yang. The animals are barely a resemblance of water, fire, earth and air, as what you would read everywhere because everyone is just doing cut and paste from Wikipedia. I don't seem to find any relation to geomancy either. It seems like archaeologists are putting Indian mythology and Chinese geomancy into Jayatataka Beret. But Feng Shui, which simply means wind and water, has five elements instead of four. It is a concept of water, fire, metal, wood and earth. So again, we are at a deadlock trying to solve this jigsaw puzzle that looks simple at a glance. Anavatapta Lake in the center of the world is not an ordinary lake. It is a mythical medical lake with no heat. I am not sure what it means by no heat, but we should not think of temperature where hot as in Celsius or Fahrenheit is a measurement for heat. I think this context is in qi energy, as in tai qi and qi gong. In summary, the story of this magnificent structure is still debatable, based on mythology, astrology or geomancy. They all have a loophole when you dive into the subject, trying to put the puzzles together. I don't think there is a simple answer as to whether Jayatataka Bare is a Buddhist or Hindu in religion, or Chinese or Indian in philosophy. I will end here for now and share more in the next presentation on this structure in relation to health, but more about diet. This is Bernie Ong signing out, and have a wonderful day. Lei Hai.